Good trading day today, breaking the six-day losing streak and up on the day, almost five figures. Rounding down, these are rounded estimates based on the platform and not on the statement. And so plus 9,900 on the day in the 250K portfolio, plus 1,950 in the 50K portfolio. Live on the month in the 250K portfolio, plus 88.6370 and up on the year. Again, these are rough estimates based on today's day. Today's results rounded down, uh, not based on the statement. And the hypothetical end of day drawdown in the portfolio is minus 21,000. And we were sitting at a worst case drawdown, and we talked about this yesterday. Um, our real results are only off 11,000 from the last equity peak. And so we're waiting for a bounce. We got one today, a little bit of a relief bounce after the six days of uh, challenging trading. And so um, you can see how it was at this worst case drawdown. We started in a drawdown and just extreme amounts of chop. Just looking at some of these portfolios here, for example, if I look at all strategies here, put all the strategies, they're sitting at a worst case drawdown as well. Just um, right there though. So due for a bounce is just extremely um, range bound chop, more than normal. And we can take a look at our stock index portfolio 16, which we were trading. It's close to that worst case drawdown as well. So a very good place to get in. As we come into our favorite time of the week, tomorrow is Friday. So typically can be a good trade on Friday. As our counter trends, we're at equity peaks. That is the one thing that I wanted to point out here. Equity peaks on SR counter trend. And we talked about this. It's kind of a boring portfolio of um, 14 strategies. Only $7,700 uh, $7, drawdown. Doesn't trade that much. And you can see there's not much P&L um, on the year, but it only trades 14 strategies. Very low frequency portfolio. We can also go back and look at the SR counter trend portfolio. Um, from let me find it here. It's down here. I was looking at it's kind of it's been kind of an SR counter trend kind of a year, and you can see how it's up 24,000. This old portfolio from 2020, it really didn't do well in 2022, but it's kind of um, you know it kind of made this worst case drawdown right there, and then it's bounced back. It's not at an equity peak, but it's an SR counter trend kind of a market. And so we continue to develop SR counter trend strategies. Let's look at the trades on the day, and then we'll go over some more chop strategy development that I'm working on. And so we look at tick pullback. It was the only loser today. It took the long trade. All trades today were long trades. It didn't trade that much. Only four NASDAQ strategies trade. Three for four. Tick reverse was up 1885. The trade of the day was EVP1, which has really struggled this year. It was one of my favorite strategies coming into the year. And the market gap down. I, I thought the market should have sold off yesterday afternoon. It was propped up. We continue to see this pattern a lot. Market's propped up. Might be a good signal after hours to short it. And then if it does go down, then go long the next day. And so um, if you see a prop up pattern like this, could be an overnight short. EVP1 effectively took the gap trade. And momentum reversal also caught the big move higher. Bostic, Raphael Bostic came out. The market was wobbly. It looked like it was going to roll over here. You know, part of me just wanted to get out because we had six losing days in a row. We were up a couple of thousand right here on the day. And then Bostic came out and his comments seemed bear more bearish to me. Mortgage rates hit 7% today and it just felt like the market would roll over. But, you know, it's hard to know everything that's going on in the market fundamentally. And the market rallied instead. And it was up, and so we we're, we took advantage of that move with our strategies. Uh, S and P momentum reversal was the only strategy to trade today. So capturing that move on the day, good trading. Let's look at the market internals. Uh, he had this uh, tick open way down here at the uh, minus. This is minus 1198. I think it's lower than that. Um, the low is minus 1564. I think it was more like 1564 is where the open was. And so um, just basically a good gap fill day. Filled the gap slowly and then it accelerated into the close. It's actually pretty choppy. I thought the market might reach for higher prices today. But we could see, would be, uh, would be interesting to see another you know small pullback overnight and then another gap fill and rally tomorrow for Friday's trade. 
is something that I would potentially anticipate, not predicting, but anticipating, and it could be another good trading day if this price action continues and follows through. It's more trendy than what we've been seeing. You can see that if you just look at the charts and how choppy this type of market is, um, you know, on, let's see, on, this is Monday, chop, Tuesday, chop and roll over, uh, Wednesday, wild price action at the open, and then choppy prop into the close, and then today just, it grinded higher, it wasn't as, you know, we've seen smoother trends than this, but we were able to capitalize on a decent sized trend, and so good trading on the day, let's look at some of the strategies that are developing still. The opening chop strategies that we talked have been talking about lost today. You see opening chop here, it lost on the day, and we'd like to see these go through a little bit of a losing streak before we turn them on in live trading. I'm still trying to license those and get those out. Uh, tick chop lost on the day. Um, adaptive moving average one minute. It's another one I'm looking at, just the adaptive moving average on a one minute. Another interesting thing about this is. Adaptive moving average is set up for central time on this chart, working on moving everything to eastern time or local time. Even though I'm in, in Texas, I set my computer to eastern standard time. But the start time is typically 8.30. And so what makes this thing so successful is that it starts an hour after, after the open instead of trading during the first hour. And so 8.30 is the open, 9.30 is when it starts. And the default that we have for this strategy is to start at 8.45, Central time, and you know, and then it ends at uh, 14:45 and 1500 is when it exits. So if you wait for it, to, wait for the first hour to pass. If you're if you're talking about opening chop in the first hour, if you skip that first hour, then this strategy doesn't get chopped up as much. And so let's look at the results for that. So with slippage and commission up 139,500, 52.84 average trade profit, 2,640 trades, $16,000 drawdown, going back seven years, and you can see the equity curve is, always looks better without slippage and commission, but a nice equity curve um, to catch the turning points on one-minute charts for a moving average, probably better ways to trade this. I'm working on um, potentially adding this to the portfolio as well, and so you can see if it started after a big losing day yesterday, it did terrible. And then, you know, after a day like yesterday, you can justify turning it on and getting in on that drawdown and then capturing a trade like today. Dynamic tick reversal turnaround. Uh, it lost today as well. This is a strategy that has a... There's a lot of these have really good equity curves since the beginning of 2022. And so if you look at this, beginning of 2022. Same with these. These only go back six months, but if I run a longer-term back test... Beginning of 2022, there's this choppy, choppy pattern that just really comes into the market in a strong way. And so I'll have more on that when I release the strategies, but this is what I'm looking at. Overall, what I want you to know is that these overall, uh, a lot of these that we're looking at are, are starting a losing streak. And so we wanted, wanted to wait for those to go into a losing streak before we added them instead of jumping in right at equity peaks. And so we didn't want to, uh, for example, have a run up in our current strategies and then turn these on as they go through a losing streak and then that limit the profits from our current strategies after they've gone through a drawdown. So once again, these are the trades on the day for March the 2nd, 2023. As we go into Friday, one of our favorite trading days of the week. Tomorrow is typically Jobs Friday, but for, for some reason, since February is a short month, Jobs Friday is not until next Friday. Hey, David Bean here. Welcome to Capstone Trading Systems YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe to join our community of algorithmic traders. We are real money traders. We share our winning streaks, we share our losing streaks, as well as market updates, strategies, and coding tips.